What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today we are at the Bronco Super Celebration West in Buena Vista, Colorado. Now before we go any further in the video, I do need to let you know we are giving away a four-door full-size Bronco. We are going to announce that giveaway the day we hit 300,000 followers, subscribers on YouTube. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button with the bell notification turned on so that way you don't miss any other videos. But what we're doing today is we're actually going to be taking this Bronco and a couple of other Broncos to the very, very top of uh, Mosquito Mosquito Pass, I think is the name of it. Uh, basically, it's like 13 or 14,000 feet above sea level. So it's going to be interesting. Hopefully, I don't uh, pass out from lack of oxygen because this boy's out of shape. <laughs> so without further ado, they are over here literally waiting on us to go on this trail ride. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video, kind of showcasing to you guys exactly what it's like to real world wheel a brand new Bronco. All right, so after a little bit of a drive out here and on a little bit of a service road, we're finally here, and as you can see, the views are absolutely epic. Uh, we've got the Bronco Sport Badlands is airing down right now. We're gonna go ahead and do that the same in our Bronco four-door Badlands. So let's go ahead and grab that air down kit. The kit that I've got, uh, I literally just, uh, you know, just a random uh, run-of-the-mill kit. So a couple of different things. So to air down, uh, we've got a Smittybilt, um, kit that you can just literally air down with and then we've got the arb air compressor so we can air back up when uh when we get done and with the whole off-roading thing so without further ado let's go ahead and get this thing uh, air down. Now, if you are new to off-roading, off airing down is uh, crucial for a couple different things. Uh, one, it allows for the tire to flex around rocks and other obstacles. But the other reason that you want to consider airing down is like on the way in here, we were getting beat to death on this gravel road. So basically what we do is I screw this piece onto the valve stem. So screw it on to where it has a nice connection. And then what we do is we take this piece, you take that and you rotate that out. Basically what you're doing is you're pulling this out and then you have the ability to air down. And so we are right now at 34 PSI. I'm gonna shoot for probably 20. I know that I can go a lot lower if I want to, but I really don't, I don't want to uh, push it too far. This is the first time I'm truly airing down in this particular Bronco. All right, so now that I've got it down to my di desired PSI, I'm basically going to put that stem back into it or the va valve core, whatever you want to call it. Once again, I'm sorry, I don't know the proper terminology, uh, but basically putting the, turning it right to get it to stick back into the valve stem. And now I can loosen it back up and do the re repeat the same process for the other three tires as well. All right, so let me give you guys a little bit of context. We've got it in rock crawl mode and let me give you a little bit about my background off-roading. So as you guys have seen in a previous video, I've got a 95 model Bronco. Um, I've lived in Alabama my whole life, so rock crawling is really not much of a thing down there. Uh, I spent a lot of time mudding and off-roading, you know, going through ruts and things like this. And so when it comes to just purely rock crawling, I am a little bit newer um, into this scene. And I'm gonna tell you, just from a, a, a guy that has kind of got a little bit of off-road experience, but nothing quite like this. This is very confidence inspiring. I mean, like, it's just insane to me that you can just literally flop it into rock crawl mode. It automatically changes all the settings. And as long as you go slow, look at your cameras. If you've got the 360 camera where it's looking at the tires, the Bronco really does a good job getting people into the off-road scene without it being intimidating. So a huge hats off to Ford in that regard. Now, another thing that is impressive is the vehicle that we've got in front of us. Man, you've got a Bronco Sport Badlands making it down this trip. Now, obviously they have to take some easier lines than this one's doing. I'm intentionally taking some of the hardest lines I can find uh, just to see how this thing performs. Uh, now, it's not gonna perform as good as when Shelby Hall was driving it <laughs> the other day, but uh, it's just, like I said, it's impressive that a Bronco Sport can make it up this. It's impressive that this is just so confidence inspiring it's not even breaking a sweat but uh oh look at this this is cool i don't know what what is that like an abandoned mine shaft of some sort uh you've got power lines coming up we're at like thirteen thousand square feet let's look at uh gaia gps 
Yeah, we're at 12,265 yeah, elevation. Gotta get some pictures of the this sport by the mine. Easy. Okay, so they just confirmed on the on the radio that is a, an old mine. So how cool is this? Look at that Bronco Sport, man. That's that's wild that this thing can actually make it. I know it's a Badlands, but I mean, based off of an escape chassis, that. I hate even admitting that it's based off of an escape chassis. I, you know, obviously this Badlands is not going to have any issues because it's lifted on 37s and it's got front and rear lockers, stabilized bar disconnect, but um, you know, not a problem at all. Now I'm going to intentionally take some more difficult lines. Um, let's see here. Let's try not to embarrass myself in front of the Bronco Nation and the Bronco Off Rodeo people because I am literally out of my league <laughs> here. But I'll tell you, you know, for a first time rock crawler, not a first time off-roader, but a first time rock crawler, it's not, not bad. And guys, keep in mind, I, I've got my stabilizer bar disconnect, disconnected. I've got the rear locker engaged and the front locker is disengaged. And the thing is still not having a problem at all. I mean, how nuts is that? Oh, I guess the question is, can a Bronco rock crawl? Absolutely. If a rookie like me can can do this, I can't wait to see what an actual pro can do. Okay, so we don't really have a breakage, but we do have something I need to report to you guys. So because these tires are so large and I need to really crank up the coilovers a little bit, what happened is you've got this wheel well liner in the front. As I was doing the trail turn assist earlier, had the wheels all the way turned in where this corner of the tire actually had grabbed and ripped out. You can see it actually tore the mounting points for the uh, uh, for basically this wheel well liner. So as you can see down underneath it, you've got some exposed. What this really is, it's not really a big problem, but it's something that I need to address when we get back to Birmingham. Way you can do that is trim it up, basically cut it off, create a little bit more room, a little more space, and then relocate some of those plastics just to make sure that the wheel has a full room to articulate. So that is something that you need to realize before you lift it and put 37s on your Bronco if you're gonna do this specific suspension kit. All right, so we are now at 12,786. I hope this wind is not too terrible for you guys. But uh, <laughs> what I've realized when we've got the, the Bronco Badlands, without Sasquatch, we've got a Bronco Sport Badlands, and then we've got my Bronco Badlands that's lifted with some different wheels and tires. What I have noticed is that it's a little scary that Ford's given this much capability to idiots like me. Like, they <laughs> and, and I'll tell you that, that you know, I, I'm really, that this is not that bad of a trail. I mean, it is, you definitely got some articulation and some opportunities to get into some trouble, like the, the drop off that you have over here off to the side. But I'm just so glad that we've actually got a professional in the house. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Greg Nicholas. I happen to be the uh, the program director for Bronco Off Rodeo. So uh, I happen to be uh, involved with uh, all four of our, our sites throughout uh, throughout the states. Um, great program to be a part of, actually. Yeah. So and to meet folks like yourself and yep. and uh, all of the Bronco owners and all of the future Bronco owners as yeah. well. Absolutely. When, and that's the other thing is, is I've already mentioned it a little bit in the video, but I have zero rock crawling experience. I've got a lot of off-roading, you know, mud and ruts and, and things like that in Alabama. But um, we actually went to the dealer event for the Bronco Off-Rodeo in Texas mm -hmm. back a couple months ago. And it really kind of set my uh, confidence a little bit higher, if, if that makes sense. It, it, do, it does, actually. And, and that's what's you know, so fascinating about, about the driving. It doesn't matter if you're Alabama or if you're you know here in Colorado or in, in Austin, Texas. It, it's all the same physics, right? Yeah. You know, it's all the same science behind the driving. It's just how you apply it is going to differ a little bit. But, but again, at the end of the day, it's all the same. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what would you say now? This is, uh, you know, we're actually riding with the Bronco Nation and the Bronco Off Rodeo. Uh, this is not a, 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 I guess, an advertisement for either one. Um, I thought I heard a truck coming behind me, but this is not an advertisement for either one of those. But what would you say? Um, and I know I kind of know what you're going to say, but what, what would you say is the biggest thing that people take away when they go to the Bronco off rodeo? They're, they're amazed at how capable the vehicle is. And then they're amazed at how capable they are actually behind the wheel and how comfortable they can be behind the wheel. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people come through that program and they're just they're just dead set convinced that they can never climb that hillside. Or they can never get over that rock in front of them. And then when they actually do it right to see to see that light bulb go off, right, to, to see that spark is, is, is really what it's all about. Right. And, and they make it that connection with, with the Bronco. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, 
it's that bond between between the the owner and the driver at that point and it, it's phenomenal to see well that's awesome that's awesome well thank you for sharing that and i, I appreciate your time uh, all the, all the coming all the way up here and what we'll do is we'll kind of document a little bit more of the ride and drive for today uh, but guys if you haven't already done so make sure you're subscribed uh, to the channel with the bell notification we've got a video coming up very soon if i can talk them into it maybe <laughs> where we're going to talk about recovery 101, uh, off-roading 101, where we actually dive into some of the things that people need to consider before they go um, out off-roading. And so do, do you mind being in our next video? If I have to. <laughs> I'm going to put a gun to his head. He's like, well, if you don't get in my well, video, I'm going right. to throw you off the cliff. I'm just kidding. Now, we will not do that. We will not do that. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll set up a little montage for you guys so you can check out what it's like to, to ride around at 14,000 uh, square feet. 14,000 feet above sea level. I've, I, I swear I've said that way too many times. I know. I'm, I'm a little deprived right now. I'm getting a little, getting a little lightheaded. I almost forgot you can't go off-roading and air down if you don't air back up so trail ride is over let me show you the rig that I've got set up for my airing back up now there's better and also more expensive kits available but this is just something I bought uh, from ARB as you can see it's actually got the air compressor here you've got the hoses that you need and then you've already seen this but that is the my gauge now what's so cool about this is you literally just plug it up to the battery terminal itself and uh, that's all the power that you need so now I can take this air truck walk it back to the back of the vehicle really to all four of them and uh it's real simple you just take it put it on and as you can see it'll air it back up now the other cool thing about this instead of having to go back and check back and forth back and forth i've just been watching the dash uh to see what my psi is in each individual tire then i know when to get it off and then i fine tune it with that smitty build just to make sure that i've got the psi exactly where i want it so there you go and that is the video guys thank you so much for watching this video if you haven't already done so subscribe to the channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video especially now that we're giving away a bronco